Hello, this is Bitzal Edwards, and uh, we're going to learn Torah in Jerusalem. Uh, the first thing in Limud of Torah that I heard from my rabbi, Rabbi Avram Brandvan, Zechert Tzadik Abrocha, blessed memory, um, is, to let this, is the law. The first thing, if somebody is new, totally new to Judaism, first thing you learn some of the laws of the Torah. And um, so the, one of the laws are tzitzit. Tzitzit are fringe, ritual fringes on a four-cornered garment that used to be very prevalent in ancient times, and Jews still keep this tradition today, connected with our past. As Bob Marley said, if in this great future you cannot forget your past. So dry your tears, I say. So... Um, the um, Shulchan Aruch is the, the code of Jewish law written, it uh, was codified only some 400 and a few years ago in the city of Tzvat in Israel by Rav Yosef Karo. And Rav Yosef Karo uh, wrote, Yitatef betzitzit vivarech me'umad. Itatef, betzitzit. See how big we can get the letters. Itatef, betzitzit, means to wrap yourself in the tzitzit. Vivarech, meumad. And he shall bless while standing. So I'm going to show you how that's done. Here we go. This is a talus. Talus is the Yiddish pronunciation. It's the, that's the name of the garment and the tzitzit to the fringes. Take the uh, by the close to the corners. Baruch Ata Adonai, Rahimu Melech Olam, Asher Kibishanu, the Mitzvah, the Tsibanu, the Tatef, the Tsitit. The next thing that Rav Yosef Karo said in the Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law, is... <laughs> oh, I open it up again, I don't remember all of it. He said, you can either, I'll just say briefly, if you want to cover your head, cover your head. And if you want to not cover your head, don't cover your head the way some people are working. Sometimes they're working with a head covering, and sometimes they're working without a head covering. And but he said it's correct to cover your head like this. Um, okay, we learned halacha first thing. Now we're going to learn the Bible, which is really called the Torah or the Chumash, it's a, you know, the five books of Moses. In Genesis, which is really a book for all of humanity, including many other places in the Torah that are also all for all of humanity, the seven Noahide laws, which are found in, throughout the whole Torah, not just the five books of Moses. In many places. So, let's start with Genesis. I'm going to start on the second and third day of Genesis. Everybody knows in the beginning God created heaven and earth. Nobody knows what that means, but everybody knows that's what it says. And uh, everybody who knows, knows. Hmm. 
And the second day is the creation of water. Now, never mentions the creation of the water. It doesn't say, and God created the water. Interesting. Why doesn't the Torah say, and God created the water? I don't have an answer for that. Um, it says, and it was by Erev Voker Yom Echad. By Yomer Elohim Yurakia Betochamayim, Vihi Mavdil Ben Mayim Lamayim. Again, by Yomer Elohim Yurakia Betochamayim, Vihi Mavdil Ben Mayim Lamayim. Let's try that one more time. Can you let's see this? There's other high tech ways of doing this. Okay. That means, and God created the firmament, the Tochamayim, and he separated between the water and the water. So there was an upper firmament and there was a lower firmament. And there was a rakia, a sky, a divider, a firmament, something separating these two waters. Now the Arizal, the great Kabbalist of Sfat, for those who are interested in Kabbalah, would actually teach every day, not Kabbalah, every day he would teach Pshat. The simple meaning of the Torah in six ways. Remember, every matter of Torah that he taught, he would, in the more after Shacharit, after the morning service, he would teach uh, the simple meaning of the, of the Torah in six different ways. And then he would teach one way according to the secret of the Kabbalah. So he did teach Kabbalah. But he, during the, on the weekday in his class in Tzvat, he taught um, six uh, lessons about uh, the six matters of the revealed Torah, Pshat, simple meaning, and uh, one matter of Kabbalah. So let's um, let's take the custom of the Arizal and let's take that Pasuk. Rashi is uh, uh, generally, the layman knows that, and scholars too, Rashi is very concerned with Pshat, as are many other great rabbis. Rashi is the great, one of the greatest uh, of all, all time commentators on the Torah. He, everything Rashi says is true until you learn Ramban. And then Ramban is another great rabbi who has the level of saying, wait a second, there's a problem in Rashi. And he has his take on it. And then, the, so then there, and then, Everything the Ramban and Rashi says is true until you learn the Orachayim, the Chaim ben Atar, who can say the Ramban and Rashi are also not exactly true. This is it. So then you have three true, because there are many true, it's more than one facet of the truth. Truth is not a monolith, black and white. Sometimes it is, but uh, you know, if there's. 70 faces of the Torah, and they're all true. doesn't mean you can make up your own laws and do whatever you want. And you could, perhaps. I can't make a law that you can jump off of Mount Everest in uh, underwear and reach Tzvat. And, and, <laughs> anyhow, Rashi says, the, the firmament was strengthened. And even though the water was created on the first day, 
like we said, this is the second day, so it was already, it didn't say it was created, so that means it was already created on the first day. It was still wet on the second day. And um, and he connected between, and God connected between the two. Um, Oh, and, it, and it, it, it sized up. It became. It hardened. The waters, very, uh, very, I mean, perhaps that are closer closer to vapor than water, in a simple level, and they became more liquid, a thicker liquid. On um, the second, on the first day, they were very liquid, closer to vapor, and on the second day, they were less vapor, more liquid, thicker. And that happened from Ga'arat to Kaddush Baruch Hu. Ga'arat means a shout, like the, sar- the sergeant, and the drill sergeant and the marines shouts, Yurakia, Yehi, Rakia. So that sounds more like samurai, the Jew, Jitsu master. It says, uh, Yehi, Rakia. Yehi, Rakia. <laughs> the waters were astonished by the shout of God. And they firmed up. Um, that's and how do we know that? Because, like it says in the book of Job, Amude Shemayim Yerofufu Kol Yom Rishon Amude Shemayim Yerofufu that the the Amude Shemayim Yerofufu Kol Yom Rishon the pillars of the heavens were flax. The latter flaccid. The uh, pillars of the heavens were flaccid on the entire first day, or uh, shaky, uh, flimsy, zero for fu. And uvesheni itmahu migarato. And on the second day, it says in Job, they were astonished by God's. Shout. Kadam shemishtomem v'omed migarat ma'ayem alav, like a person who's shocked by the uh, somebody who's shouting and threatening. So that's one simple meaning of the verse. The Ramban says Yirakia. Homer, I'm just going to spot translate this in English, the material that was initially uh, created from nothing, because the world was created something from nothing, ex nihilo. Uh, creation ex nihilo means creating something from nothing. So that when the world was created from nothing, the matter that was created, said, there shall be a firmament. So God created something from nothing, and that something is a voice that said something. It's a voice of something. Right. Um, Metuvach all the tochomayim. It was stretched like a tent in the midst of the waters. The firmament was stretched like a tent in the midst of the waters. And connected between the waters and the waters, and, sorry, and separated between the upper waters and the lower waters, and that's what Rebbe in Rebbe Huda Nasi in the uh, Talmud, the author of the Mishnah, the, or the editor of the Mishnah, really, uh, said. Uh, The, the Rebbe said that the uh, waters on the first day were wet, and on the second day they congealed. Now, Rav, who was also another Talmudic master, uh, 2,000 years ago, 1,800 years ago, said um, uh
there shall be a firmament that the firmament uh, became firm, so hardened. Then Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Simon, another uh, sage of the Talmud, said he was made the he made the firmament from a talit. The firmament was made from a kind of prayer shawl. Like it is written, the Yirku'u et Pache Hazahab. Like the verse the verse says, um, I believe it's talking about the um, construction of the tabernacle. That the um, the golden um, inlay, the golden uh, um, the golden inlay on the vessels, or the 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 gold covering uh, on the or the gold the pache zahab, the golden plates were the yirka'u uses the same word when it talks about um, the uh, the metal work the, the goldsmith uh, uh, the goldsmithery is that a word the uh, met the um, making the vessels in the temple and the gold they had to be um, flattened with a hammer right into a sheet like a talit like a pressure so, so um, that's the Ramban it's the second interpretation okay so we just had actually we had Rashi said um, that God shouted that water was created on the first day and God shouted the second day and the water became congealed and he, he bases that on the verse in Job chapter 26 the Ramban said that the world was created from nothing it was actually the what said so what's uh, so what does it mean and God said uh, create uh, let there be a firmament so that was actually matter that was created from nothing was the voice that created the firmament in the midst of the waters. That's one. And that's, uh, he proves it from Rabbi, Rabbi Yudha Nasi, says that the waters were uh, wet, wetter on the first day, on the second day they congealed, it's the same thing as Rashi had said. And uh, Rav, later, a later sage in the Talmud, said that when it says, let there be a firmament, that the firmament should strengthen itself. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Simon, not Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, but Rabbi Yehuda, son of Rabbi Simon, Simon said uh, that the firmament was, was made from a talit, so yeah, that's different. Um, Talit, it's no, that's kind of similar. That it's just like a like a tent. It's one one interpretation. The other interpretation is it's different. Rashi doesn't say it was like a tent. It's just, so there's there's a that's a third uh, example. The fourth example is it's not like a tent. It's like a talit, which could be the same thing. So let's count that as three. Ah, but the fourth uh, thing is really that the, the when it says rakia, it's also talking of, it's a precursor, a foreshadowing of the temple, where everything in the temple was hints, hints at the uh, heavens, the creation of the world, and the heavens, all of the heavens, and all, all the earth, and all of the heavens, and all of creation. Um, it's hinted at in all the everything about the holy temple and all the details of the holy temple. So it says, so where's the firmament? He says it's. Uh, 
the, the beating the golden the gold pieces of gold into plates in the verse where you um, forming a an inlay. Yeah, that's a fourth interpretation. What does it mean? The Ramban goes on, Mayim. <coughs> Let's look at the Orachayim. No, Ibn Ezra. Ibn Ezra says, and God said, the Gon said about the firmament. The Gon, uh, he said, Hagaon. Perhaps he means Sadia Gon, one of the Gonim, in the period just after the Talmud, around the year 800. Um, so I, I don't know which Gon is referring to. He said, the genius, or the pride, it's literally, that's actually, that's a mistranslation. It's not the genius of Israel, the pride of Israel, like the word Gaon Yaakov. And Gaon Yaakov in the, ta- in the Bible, it doesn't mean the genius of Israel, it means the pride of Israel. Like Gav, the, the root of the word is Gaava. Gaava means pride. Gaon is, is etymologically connected in the, in the root. So the pride of uh, generation, the, the, which we call today the similarly uh, somewhat connected the genius um, said about the firmament that it's only talking about something that's hanging like the yirka'u the word yirka'u in, in another context has to do with things that are hanging yirka'u arka'am is a verse that says Yirku Yirku Arkaam. Um, and uh, that's, I, I have to look up the translation of those words uh, without making any promises. Um, so that's a fifth, uh, fifth meaning, and simple meaning. If the firmament was hanging, like it says in another place in the Torah, it says the Yirku, like Rakia, Arkaam. So similarly it also says the Yit Khamem the Yim Techem Kaol Shabbat the Shabbat. And uh, and they were there's also another verse that says they were stretched like a uh a tent in which to sit. So the tent is, is more of the Indian of being something that you hang as opposed to uh, something that's uh, just a, a piece of material, a thin a buckloff, a, t- a, a prayer shawl, a, a tent. You know, it's the, it has to be hung. So that's the sixth. And how honorable is, is it who says, who, how honorable is he who says that the extremities of the sun, they are the extremities from the days of Onkus, from the days of the ocean, sorry, Onkianus. That the far edges of the sun were reached from the days of the ocean. So the, Ibn Ezra was very devoted, very poet. He was a great poet, also a great doctor. So he's using poetic language. And he says, "What's the okay? Here's a, the sixth shot from the Ibn Ezra that the firmament was uh, a veer. It was this, an empty space." It wasn't a thing, it wasn't a material, that's a new, that's a brand new shot from the others. The others were similar, connected, different shades. But when he said, now he's, he's revealing secrets a little more, so this is the, this is the secret from the Ibn That when light strengthens, uh, so the word solidifies, if light were to solidify more, become uh, thicker, different kinds of light. There's perhaps there's thin light, which 
strong light, weak light, when the light became stronger over the land. And the wind dried out the land. The fire, the heat, the, the flame was converted into firmament. So it's going from air or light to air. No, air to the light, first light, then to air. And then uh, the air became hot. And the, the heat created something we call the permanent, the rakia. And that process is clearly a secret. I'm going to say one last thing about the, uh, from the secret uh, Rabbi Brandvine, my Rabbi, uh, blessed memory. He told me how the Menachem Mendel of Kotsk, Zechit Tzadik Lubracha, explains a cryptic statement of Rabbi Nachman. Rabbi Nachman would say things that were very difficult to understand. And uh, so he says at one place, Looking at the sky creates the fear of God. If you, if you want to, have, if you don't have the fear of God and you want to be, have awe-inspired and fear, awestruck and have fear before God to, to heed His word, look at the sky. Uh, that's a cryptic statement. So Menachem Mendel of Kotsk said, that "Look back at that Rashi. You, you can still. This is the secret. This is the." Um, which I find uh, more mysterious than the Ibn Ezra. But the meaning of it is you can still hear that shout from God saying, Vahi Rakia. Yahi Rakia! Be well. <laughs>